Hi, this is Kristen with Hooks, Books, and Wanderlust. Today I'm here with a quick tutorial to show you how to take a crocheted rectangle and turn it into a hat. If you are new to hat making, this is a great beginner way to kind of step into the world of hat making without having to be familiar with working in the round or anything crazy. Um, if you can crochet a rectangle, you can crochet a hat. So I'm gonna show you how to take a rectangle and turn it into a hat. So let's get started. So to get started, you're going to grab your piece of your rectangle and um, your crochet hook. And generally speaking, you're going to have the length of your rectangle is going to be the circumference of your hat. The height of your rectangle will be the height of your hat. Um, it's worth mentioning if you are new to making hats that there's usually something we call negative ease, which just means stretch. Um, so generally speaking, if your model is a 17 inch head circumference, you might consider making your rectangle a length of 15 inches or thereabouts, depending on the stitch pattern you're using and how much stretch you get out of it. Um, in this particular stitch pattern, there is a lot of stretch. This is the Brookside beanie pattern using the spiked boxes crochet stitch, both of which I have a tutorial and a pattern that I will link below for you if you are interested in that. And um, just to kind of get us started, once you've finished crocheting your rectangle, you can fold it in half lengthwise. I haven't taken my hook, I haven't caught, I haven't cut my yarn and I haven't taken my hook out because, um, well, it fell out there. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna line up my stitches. I'm gonna match them up and then I'm just gonna go under both sets of stitches to seam these two short sides together. So I'm gonna chain one and turn my work here and I'm gonna go under the first stitch on the side, the side closest to me and then I'm gonna go under, let's make sure I'm doing this right. Yep, and go under the first stitch of the other side and I'm just gonna yarn over pull up a loop and pull that through. And that's just a simple slip stitch. For this pattern, I recommend just doing a slip stitch. It's quick and it's easy. If you are really tight with your slip stitches and you prefer to single crochet instead, so you have a little more give in your stitches, you can do that. If you wanna be a little bit more advanced, then you can always use the mattress stitch, which is a favorite of mine as well. Um, and I will link a tutorial for that down below for you. So you're just gonna continue working into each of these pairs of stitches, oops, all the way down until you get to the end. So I'm gonna continue doing that and I will be right back. Okay, so we are done slip stitching up the side of our seam here. And I am now just gonna tie off and cut my yarn. Now, when I go to cut my yarn, I intend to um, use that yarn tail to cinch the top of my hat. So I'm gonna leave a really nice long tail, probably about, probably only need about 12 to 18 inches I just like to have plenty of yarn to work with. That's just my personal preference. I don't like having to uh, worry about the yarn, the yarn falling off my needle as I'm trying to pull everything. So don't cut it too tight. Um, so I've got a nice long piece here. It's about maybe 18 inches long. And you're gonna grab a tapestry needle or a uh, large eye yarn needle and thread your yarn tail onto that. Now, the thing with cinching the top, and again, this is there's several methods for doing it. Um, this is probably the simplest 
work way of doing it. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you today is basically just weaving in and out of your stitches and then pulling tight to kind of like a drawstring bag. Now, sometimes, uh, depending on the hat and how it's constructed, you might, like I mentioned, um, you might have like here, I've got raw edges. This is the side of my rows um, versus I had nice top V's to work into for my slip stitch, but it could be the other way around. So depending on what kind of hat you're making and how you constructed your rectangle, that might vary for you. So in my instance, I've got the sides of my rows. So what I'm gonna start out by doing, when I cinch, I actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it inside out because I don't want this seam to be on the outside. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip that. So you can see my seam is now on the inside of my work and my yarn tail is coming from the inside as well. So I'm just gonna kind of thread my needle in and out of these rows. And you don't have to be too close together, um, but you do wanna try and kind of stay consistent. So I just am doing every other row. If you've got actual stitches instead of the sides of rows, then you might just do every two or three stitches. Um, but just weave in and out, like so until you come back around to the where you started at the seam. Okay. And just kind of pull gently, pull that closed. And one thing I like to do, because I started out on this side of my seam, is I'm actually gonna kinda come back through where I started just to kind of come full circle with it. So then I'll pull it nice and tight. And now you can see how I've totally closed the top of my hat, but we're not done yet. So the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna make sure that it stays nice and tight and secure. So I'm just going to keep weaving my, um, my yarn needle under the layers of my hat through the in circles here. Just kind of getting right there in the center. Sorry, I went off screen there. So I'm just gonna get right up into the center of the, the hat every time. And just work our way around a good couple of loops. Okay, so I'm not sure how many times I've gone around, but I've lost count. So I've gone a lot. So now that I've gotten that kind of secure, I definitely don't want that popping open. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread my yarn needle right down, make sure you can see this here, right here in the center. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my dog in the background. She's playing with the door stop. Sorry about that if you can, and whining at me. So now I have threaded my yarn tail back through the inside of my hat. I'm gonna flip it back out, uh, inside out and I'm gonna continue to work my yarn tail around just a couple of times on the inside. And this is gonna serve two purposes. The first is it's gonna make it that much more secure and it'll help me weave in my tails. So I'm gonna go around this direction a couple times here. Pull tight. And then I am going to change directions and go back. So I'm not gonna go back in where I just came out because that'll just remove my stitch. So I'm just gonna kind of go next to it and then keep going back in circles again, moving the opposite direction. 
Sometimes I have to dig my yarn needle into it to get it, and that's okay. You want it secure, you don't want this popping open. All right. I'm actually gonna work my way back around to the seam. And then when I do, I'm gonna use the seam to hide my yarn tail. By just going in and out. And back and forth, up and down, back and forth, however you want to think of it. The more you do that, the less likely your yarn tail is to slip out if it has to get washed or anything. Just from overuse or anything like that. You don't want that tail coming out. So now that I've done that, I'm going to take my yarn or my embroidery scissors here, snip that end. My beginning yarn tail, I'll weave that in later. Get that flipped right side out and fluff it some and there you go. So at this point, if you want, you can add a brim or you can leave it as is, totally up to you. This is the Brookside beanie pattern, which I do add a brim to it. So I'm going to attach my yarn and then work that brim and I will hide that yarn tail as I work over it. Uh, to create the brim. But um, other than that, you can leave it as is if you want. You really don't need to. It's perfect this way too. And that is how you seam and cinch a rectangle into a hat. If you liked this tutorial, which I hope that you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up for me. It really helps out my channel, uh, helps me know what kind of stuff you guys like to see more of, and it helps it get a boost in the YouTube algorithm so that other people looking for this might be able to see it in their feed. So I really appreciate that and all your support. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure that you subscribe for more tutorials and patterns and travel adventures and all kinds of fun stuff. So I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.